Hey everyone, Mr. McIntosh here, and Apple just released the Mac OS Ventura 13.4.1 update. And this was a really interesting week. We had multiple security updates released on a Wednesday and multiple beta releases for Mac OS Sonoma Beta 2 and iOS 17. So we're gonna go over all the changes and features of this update, along with a live demo installing Mac OS Ventura 13.4.1 and some open core legacy patcher news, where I actually had some trouble on my 2011 15-inch MacBook Pro. We're gonna go over all that next. So first, let's talk about this really interesting release schedule. Last week on June 15th, Apple released beta releases for macOS Ventura, Monterey, and Big Sur. But the kicker here was, is that they released the next version of Monterey and Big Sur. So they released macOS Monterey 12.6.8 beta and macOS Big Sur 11.7.9. They skipped over the beta 3 version or 12.6.7 and 11.7.8. What was interesting about that is that was the tip off of saying, that maybe Apple is already preparing the 13.4.1 security update for next week. So we thought we were going to get this on Monday, but Monday was a federal holiday. And then we were thinking, we're thinking maybe Tuesday, nothing happened Tuesday. And here we are on Wednesday and we got the updates for today. So let's go over what Apple released today. Along with the Ventura 13.4.1 update, Apple also released macOS Monterey 12.6.7. Mac OS Big Sur 11.7.8, Safari as a standalone update for Mac OS Monterey and Big Sur. So you'll see 15.6 along with the 12.6.7 update and the 11.7.8. And remember, this is included in the Ventura update, so you don't have to download a standalone update. There was no production Xcode updates and there was no studio display firmware updates. On the iOS side, there was 16.5.1, iOS 15.7.7, iPad OS 16.5.1, iPad OS 15.7.7, Watch OS 9.5.2, and there was no TV OS update that we could see today. And strangely, Watch OS 8.8.1 from Series 3 to the SE was released. So if you're running an old version of 8, you can update this for the latest security update. So what else was interesting today is Apple, after the 12 o'clock Central Daylight Time release of the public releases, there's always a possibility of Apple dropping another release, like a beta release, in the late afternoon, usually around 3.30 Central Standard Time. So after these were released, I'm like, okay, looks like we're good to go, and I went back to work. And then I come back later, and then I see that Apple <laughs> dropped the beta updates at 3.30. So this was me thinking, hey, Apple finished updates today, still knowing there was a possible late drop, but there was. So what we had here was a Sonoma and iOS and iPad and tvOS drop. So we got Sonoma beta 2, we got Xcode beta 2, 15 beta 2, command line tools for Xcode. There was no studio display firmware update for beta. And on the iOS side, iOS 17 beta 2, iPad OS 17 beta 2, tvOS beta 2, and watchOS 10 beta 2. Our demonstration Mac here today is a 2020 M1 MacBook Air, and the update is showing for 13.4.1 at 770 megabytes. So let's click install now. And agree, and we'll type in our password. And we'll let this download and then we'll let it start to prepare and we're going to keep track of how long it's going to take to do the preparation and how long it's going to take to install. It jumped up to 1.88 gigabytes and sometimes that happens if recovery OS has to be updated. So we can check that after the update's finished and then as soon as it finishes downloading it's going to jump into the preparing mode and we'll monitor how long that takes. Okay we started our preparing at 11.35 p.m. and we'll see we jump from 30 to 25 minutes. So we'll see if this quickens up usually it does and it doesn't take 30 minutes by any shot here but we'll kind of monitor look it already jumped to 20 minutes so we'll kind of follow it here to see i'm guessing probably anywhere between 5 to 10 minutes for this update Okay, we're back up on 13.4.1, and we can see how long it took to install the 13.4.1 update. The preparing mode took only four minutes, and the total installation time after it's restarted, it took only four minutes. So from start to finish, only eight minutes to do. And again, remember, if you have automatic downloads selected in software update, the preparing will already be done in the background. So it's only going to take four minutes to install on M1 at the very least, because this is one of the oldest Apple Silicon Max, so that was pretty quick compared to the previous updates that has a lot more changes in it, around 13 minutes, and security update 13.3.1 took about 8 minutes, so right on target. 
After updating to 13.4.1, the build version changed to 22F82. After installing the 13.4.1 update, I like to check the size of the Mac OS operating system. And in this case, it's showing up as 13.32 gigabytes. And you can see that down here without having to hold over the um, chart up here. And I took a screenshot of before we updated and you can see that it was 13.27 on 13.4. So we only gained about five megabytes. Now, Apple also re released a slew of full installers. We got a full installer for Ventura 13.4.1. We also got Monterey and Big Sur full installers, which is still great to see those being created. And Mac OS Sonoma got a full installer for Beta 2 here, and I got the link right to Beta 2. They also released a full IPSW restore file for M1 and M2 Apple Silicon Macs. And notice they also released a fourth version that is only for the new M2 15 inch Mac. MacBook Air, the M2 Mac Pro, and the new M2 Mac Studio. So if you try to download this and install that on anything other than those, it will not install. So keep in mind when you see this different version number on there, and that's also for the full installer. Now I keep track of the firmware updates every time Apple releases an update, and this is why I do, because in this particular case, Apple did not update the Apple Silicon firmware. It is still the same as 13.4.1. Now that's the same for the bootloader. That is the same at 84.22.121.1. That is not changed. And for the Bridge OS, if you have a T2 Intel Mac, it was updated from 13.4.1. You can see 5060 from 5058. And Safari was also updated to 13.4.1 and I've got standalone full installers for Safari if you ever needed to reinstall Safari. So let's talk about what's new in the 13.4.1 update. Usually what I do is I always make sure to check Apple's documentation for their updates and the update window when you click about the update when you're in software update system preferences or system settings came here i was like oh look at all the changes and i didn't even look at what they were yet and then i posted about it and howard oakley was like hey um yeah you might want to scroll down a bit so i did that and i realized <laughs> apple accidentally cut and paste the changes for 13.4 and the 13.4.1 i should have known better right because usually security updates don't have any of these and they'll say something like this update contains important security fixes but anyway the 13.4.1 update does not contain any bug fixes or new features so now let's talk about the security updates it does fix so we can see all the updates that Apple put out today, uh, including that watch OS 8.8.1, uh, but they all contain the same CV, CV vulnerability for kernel and WebKit. So if we look at the Ventura 13.4.1 update, there's a kernel and the WebKit for Safari that were patched. Now remember, there was a couple of people saying, well, wait a minute, why couldn't this be put out in a rapid security response update? And that's because kernel vulnerabilities cannot be patched with RSR updates. They need a full update. So that's why we got that. Now let's take a look at this. We can see that this impact was an app can may be able to execute arbitrary code with kernel privileges. This is the important piece. Apple is aware this issue may have been actively exploited and the WebKit vulnerability for CVE 2023 processing maliciously crafted web content may lead to arbitrary code execution. And again, Apple is aware of a report that this issue may have been actively exploited. So when this happens, someone reports this and they also reported they may have seen this in action out there already. These are really important fixes that need to be patched as soon as possible in my full recommendation. Well, we talk about this and that's why i talked about the safari update because if you're on mac os monterey notice how there's only the kernel in here so that's why you have to go back to get the look at the 16.5.1 to see the other cve that patches the webkit piece so again if you're on big Sur or monterey make sure you also install the safari update now let's take a look at some benchmarks here. I use Geekbench 6 application to run it and I make sure we're at full battery power and we are not running any extra apps and spotlight indexing is finished after the update before I run them. On 13.4, you can take a look at my all the scores that I run under my account here was 2373 on a single core and an 8620 on a multi-core. Now when we updated to 13.4.1, we got a 2358 and a 8582. So if you look, there's a, a little bit lower than normal multi-core score, but that's why I keep an eye on these just to see if we can set a baseline here. 
Now let's talk about OpenCore Legacy Patcher for unsupported Macs. The current version is 0.6.7 as of June 22nd, a day after the 13.4.1 update came out. And when I go to test, I always make sure I try to test at least two machines. The demonstration Mac for this test for OpenCore Legacy Patcher is a 2015 mid 15 inch MacBook Pro that is metal compatible and a 2011 15 inch MacBook Pro that is non-metal. Now, I mentioned earlier in the opening of the video that I had some problems and this is the problem that I had with the 2011. After installing the 13.4.1 update and then it booted just fine to the OS and then I applied the patches the root patches and then when it came back up it came to the desktop just like this it loaded half of the menu bar but as you can see the file menu is not here and anytime i tried to open up any kind of applications it stalls and then they they get into a force quit mode so normally when something like this happens it may not be just all the units it might be just my particular machine and something went wrong during the update so when I tell you about this, I don't want to scare you away, but that's why I try to do multiple tests here to see what happens when we install, because Apple can change literally anything on the operating system when they do these security updates that could cause problems with OpenCore Legacy Patcher or the update itself. When this happens, we can try to hit force close here. There we go. So you can see that nothing's really responding. So we can force quit those. Um, but that's not really going to help us do anything and nothing can really happen here. Uh, what I could recommend doing is booting the system back up in safe mode. So the way to do that is to restart the Mac and we can hold down power to get our menu here. Give it, you can hold down power and we can get our restart menu and we can click restart and then we're going to hold down shift. And when we hold down shift, it'll boot up in safe mode. And what that does is that actually runs a couple checks in the background and will load the system with no launch daemons or launch agents and try to load a minimal OS. And it's not going to be accelerated either. So it won't have any accelerated graphics and will not load the root patches. So we'll see if this helps us out at all. And we can kind of troubleshoot from there. But while we're waiting for that to boot... Let's go back to our 2015 machine that is totally fine. So that's why I wanted to be clear here that this system is running perfectly. No problems at all. Apps launch. Safari is fine. No issues whatsoever with any of this. So um, is it just my machine? I'm just not sure yet. It's still this update is still brand new. But for this 2015 machine, it ran OK. Again, I'm going to have to do a little bit of troubleshooting. And what I'll do for the 15 inch, I'll put some information in the description of this video after I do some troubleshooting to let you know what I figured out with this particular model to see what was the issue or the problem. OK, quick update here. The safe mode would not continue the boot. So we log back in and the system is still having issues. But I'm not going to let this be the end of it. I'm going to do some troubleshooting shooting tomorrow and again like I mentioned earlier I'm going to put the notes all in the description of this video to let you know what's going to go on I'm going to try to boot up with a different version I'm going to try some other things I appreciate you watching this video if you have any questions let me know in the comments and we'll catch you in the next video thanks